Mary's right. It is better for all of us if she goes to stay with Elizabeth. She will leave for Hebron in the morning. I don't understand the words you've spoken And my heart is still trying to believe When you're looking down on me, what do you see? A mother to a savior and king There's nothing in my life I have to offer Nothing in my blood of royalty I'm just a poor and simple virgin I am not a mother to a savior and king I need you more than ever God, can you hear me now? Your stars are full of answers Hiding behind the clouds Give me eyes to see Powerful stuff, huh? Powerful stuff. That is from the movie uh, Journey to Bethlehem. If you've not seen it, it is really terrific. Um, let's open with the word of prayer. Jesus, thank you for this time. Lord, we, our hearts are open. And Lord, just like Mary there, we've got some stuff that we got to deal with here. But you're helping us through every single step of the way. Give us ears to hear and, and eyes to see what you're up to. Lord, plant something in our hearts here this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Yeah, like I said, that's from Journey to Bethlehem. And, you know, we're going to talk about Mary today. It's Mary's Christmas. If, if, do you get it? You get it? Like, yeah, Mary's Christmas. I know, very clever. You're welcome. Um, but most of our relationships are pretty superficial. And we start out with who we are, right? I'm Heath, and I work here. I work at Church of the Heartland, and I'm married to Misty. And, you know, and you kind of have to go through all those different ones. And my son is Hagen, and my daughter's Mia. And, and you kind of go through who you are. I graduated from here, and I work over there. That's how we do those relationships. And that's how we interact with each other, basically, in American society for the first part of, of what's going on. But you had Mary, and she's known as the mother of Jesus. Now, that is something she's going to hang on to for over 2,000 years now. It's not like, oh, which Mary? Oh, Mary, the mother of Jesus. Oh, that one. But, you know, she was a lot more than that. 
That was kind of a superficial understanding of her. She was a lot more than that. Actually, God did a lot of things in her and through her that we're going to talk about here today. Not only that, some other uh, traditions, Christian traditions, have misunderstood Mary so much that they even kind of worship her or even pray to her. And we're going to see how she's very human, very uh, normal, and how God really did use her. And we can do a lot of, uh, we can see a lot of ourselves in her today. That's why we're calling this Mary's Christmas. We're going to go to Luke chapter 1 today, and we're going to start in verse 31. You will conceive and give birth to a son, this is the angel speaking to Mary, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great, and no doubt, and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, all right, how can this happen? I am a virgin. We won't get too deep into this. Ask your moms at home. But Mary has some questions here, how this is going to work, and uh, those were some legit questions, right? This is going to be embarrassing to my family. Uh, How are you going to do this? I don't understand. But Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. What an awesome response. I'm the Lord's servant. Now, Elizabeth, okay, she goes to visit her cousin Elizabeth. Elizabeth gave a glad cry and exclaimed to Mary, God has blessed you above all women, and your child is blessed. Okay, now, Elizabeth is holding in her belly the uh, John the Baptist, a pre-born John the Baptist. And so we have uh, an older Elizabeth, but still it's a cousin of Mary's, and she goes to visit, uh, and that was what we saw there in the opening video. She goes to visit her cousin Elizabeth, and Elizabeth tells her, Hey, God's really blessed you here. Why am I so honored that the mother of my Lord should visit me? This is what Elizabeth says to a late teenage Mary. And when I heard your greeting, Elizabeth says, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. You're blessed because you believe that the Lord would do what he said. Now, Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then went back to her own home. And then, of course, the famous verses here. They, the shepherds, hurried to the village, Bethlehem, and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. And all who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. Okay, we're going to go through a lot of this. We're going to kind of break this down here because Mary really is something we can uh, relate to here. See, Mary obeyed even when she had lots of questions. See, verse 34, Mary asked the angel, How can this happen? And then verse 38, she responds with, I am the Lord's servant. She had a lot of questions. How's this going to work? I don't understand. Why did you pick me? What's going on here? And so the angel explained things. But you know, sometimes even if God's told you, you, we don't just quite get it quite yet. She really did not understand. But I love her response there in verse 38. I am the Lord's servant. That needs to be the response of you and I too. We got questions. God, what's going on? How come this happened to me? Why, why is this person, why did this, this family member of mine pass away? What's going on? I don't understand all that's going on. But our response needs to be just like Mary's response here in verse 38. I'm the Lord's servant. All right, God, I don't know what's going on here, but I'm going to obey you and I'm going to do what you call me to do no matter what. You need, we need to lead with the yes when it comes to obeying the Lord. Most of the time, guys, we lead with the no. What we usually do is we start out with saying, I don't think so, God. And then we make God prove it to us. Make it make sense. And if God doesn't make it all make sense to us, uh, we usually don't take the step of faith. But God's saying, I want, you to, I want you to lead with a yes to the Lord. When God asks us to do something, guys, we need to be like, yes, all right, God, I don't understand it all. I don't know how you're going to do it all. But I am going to be the one who leads with a yes. May we be the church that leads with a yes when it comes to the things of God. May we be the families, right? May our families be the ones when God says to do something, we say, all right, God, yes, I don't understand how you're going to do it all, but I will take this initial step of faith. Now, that obedience, see, 
Mary's obedience got Elizabeth's baby jumping. As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Okay, now, theologically, let me explain what happens here. Jesus is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. We see that in, I think it's John 15. So we have a preborn Jesus baptizing a preborn John the Baptist in the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's what happens here theologically. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain what I think this means to us. You see, Mary obeyed God. And that obedience, that, that obedience that she was walking in made what was inside Elizabeth start to jump. Okay, I'll be, you guys are still looking at me like, what is he talking about here? All right, hold on. You know, when we obey God, other people will start to obey God. When Holy Spirit's starting to work through us, the Holy Spirit will start to work through somebody else. I've heard uh, just Wednesday, we were, uh, and by the way, shout out to all the guys in the, uh, guys and girls in the uh, jail church that's uh, watching right now. But I was there last Wednesday night with the guys, and, and we were ministering, and it was like, all right, and there was, God was doing some things, but a couple of the, the brothers that were ministering felt a little discouraged, wondering why some aren't maybe taking the step after they get out of jail to come to church and maybe take a step of faith, and they were having this little conversation. Well, we have Thursday night church. Guess what? One of the important guys came from that, uh, from that pod. He came, and he had just got out of uh, the situation with the jury and the whole thing. And he came to church and brought his whole family. And you know what? We got to pray with him. And guess what? My baby started to jump. Because I saw what God was doing in them. And I was thinking, yeah. And guess what? It made me want to obey God. I saw what God was doing there. Many times here at Church of the Heartland for the last couple of years, we've done uh, months, we've done uh, who's your one and who can you invite to church? Who can you bring? Who can you minister to at work or at home? And you know what? Many of you today, you may not know it, but you were probably somebody's one and you are here today because somebody invited you and ministered to you. And when I hear those stories, like I brought my one today, my baby starts to jump, right? You understand, I don't believe in a man being pregnant, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> All those online cutting pieces of this thing and making me sound out of, <laughs> out of bounds. Guess what, guys? When we obey God, other people will obey God. When we start to take steps of faith, other people take steps of faith. And it gets us excited on the inside. Let's use this Christmas season to get what's in us inside of somebody else. Let's start to share our testimonies now like never before and tell everybody what God's done inside of us. Why? Because something's going to be ignited inside of them when we do just that. Now, Mary needed some encouragement. Elizabeth exclaimed to Mary, God has blessed you above all women, and you and your child is blessed. Mary needed encouraged. And now you, you're, you're, she's got these questions. She's still obeying God. She's taking steps of faith. But she goes to a, an, an Elizabeth who's known God for longer, been further down the path of walking with the Lord. And so she goes to Elizabeth, and as she arrives there, um, Elizabeth says three times, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed. Now, Mary needed that encouragement really bad. I mean, she was probably wondering, how is, I don't understand, how is this going to work? What's going on? And you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed. This, this veteran believer in God told Mary, this is, this is what you're doing here is God's will. Don't stop, keep going. And you know what we see in Matthew, in, excuse me, Luke chapter one, and I, for time's sake, we didn't have those scriptures, but we see what's called Mary's song. After Elizabeth speaks these words of encouragement into Mary, we see Mary's song. And Mary's song is filled with how great God is and how amazing it is that God would choose her. In other words, she overcame all of her questions and all of her doubts when she heard that encouragement that Elizabeth put inside of her heart. Now, if you're not aware of it, this Christmas season can be very discouraging for a lot of people. Matter of fact, sadly, it's some of the most happy times and hurtful times all mixed into one, depending on the situation that people are going through. So we got to be the voice of encouragement into other people's lives at this time, now like never before. Let me give you a couple easy ways you can do this. You could text somebody that you know is going through a hard time. Now, don't call them because we don't do that anymore. It's 2023. 
Start with the text message. You can, you, if you know them real good, you can, but you better know them. Start with the message, kind of message, how are you doing? If you want to talk, let me know. If not, just know that I, will pr- I am praying for you right now and, and really pray for them. Pray for them right now. Take that step. And I'm telling you what, those kinds of things, I, I can't tell you how many times I've felt God impress on my heart. All right, text somebody, and I'm like, okay. And they're like, you wouldn't believe it. I just got out of the ER right there. You know, we got to be led by the Holy Spirit. And when we do that, man, we can really turn around the whole situation in someone's heart and life. Because, because of one simple little text, one s- simple little step. If you see somebody in the store, hey, take a couple seconds and, and pray with them if, if they need it. Uh, not just like, hey, you. <laughs> <laughs> I just once again had another situation just like that. Is somebody there? It's like, oh, well, let's pray. All right. I mean, we got the chips around us and the Coke on one side and the chips on the other. We're going to pray. Maybe be those Christians, right? And if anybody looks down on us for that, they're too bad. We're serving the Lord, and the days are dark, and people need encouraged. Amen. Amen. Mary prayed through things. In 2.19, it says, Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. All right, I'm going to go through these in the Greek. The original word is kept is centerio, and it means to preserve a thing from being lost, and thought is uh, here is symbolo, and it means to bring something together in your mind. I, I want to I give you this concept here today because I think it's a really important part of what happened in Mary's life. So chapter 2, verse 19, she kept and she thought. Now, to ke- kept being keep a thing from being lost. That means that if she would not have held on to what God was saying through that angel, through Elizabeth, if she would not have held on to those things, they could have been lost. Guys, when God speaks to us, we have got to hold on to what God is saying. Write it down. Take, make a journal, something. When God speaks to us, we've got to take it very seriously. Maybe some. Part of this message might be something that you know is from God into your heart. Maybe God gives you a Bible verse, and you know that Bible verse is for you. Keep those things. Centario. Why? Because you are going to need them later. Mary needed this information later, and that's why she held on to it. Now, not just that, though. we got to do symbolo. We, she thought on these things. Now, that's not just like it, it is just using your brain, but it's more than that. It really means to put it together in your mind. So what she was doing was she had these questions and she was praying about, she was symbolic, she was thoughtfully praying through what all of this means. What is all this? What is going on? What does all this mean? So she was taking this word from the angel and she had had kept this one and she was trying to put this all together in her heart and mind as she prayerfully worked through it. Why is that important? Because she is going to need this later. Boy, is she going to need this later. But man, this is the process you and I need to be taken here. When we're, when we're taking steps of faith and we don't understand how this is going to work, we don't understand what God's doing, but we're still taking those steps of faith, listen, you're going to need to hold on to those words and you're going to need to prayerfully put the pieces of the puzzle together because it's not going to make sense initially. It never does. From when Peter was stepping out of that boat to walk on water, that doesn't make any sense. When the little boy brought his lunch to feed 5,000, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, if you go through the, the Old Testament and the New Testament, the miracles that we saw, the reason why they're miracles is because they don't make sense. And people took the step anyway, and God met them in that place. So we're going to have questions. She did. She obeyed anyway. When God speaks, centario, hold on to them. Symbolo, pray through them. See, okay, I don't understand, Lord. Okay, there's a little piece, and I'm telling you, it's a beautiful process when God starts to show us where these things go, how they all kind of fit together. It's a beautiful thing that happens. Now, this is Amy Carmichael. The closest picture we could get, she was born in 1867 when photography was really just getting started, so that's why this is the best picture we have. So in 1867, we have Amy Carmichael born. She was born in Ireland. She's Irish. Um, when she was a, a teenage girl, Ireland was very poor in those days. Matter of fact, many, uh, many people were immigrating to America because Ireland was so poor. Uh, many of our, you know, if you have Irish descent, it's because of those kind of situations. 
her family was kind of an upper middle class family, and she got out of church one day. She's wearing all her church clothes. She got out of church, and she saw an old woman holding a bunch of sticks to burn for firewood, and uh, no one was helping this old woman, and she walked over there, and she helped this old woman, and people made fun of her, kind of like, hey, you're going to get your clothes dirty, and what are you doing? But God spoke to her, and God said, make sure what is eternal is what is important. Make sure what's eternal is what's important for, for her. Well, that was a, a life-changing moment. And you know what she did? She centario. She held on to that. And she said, okay, God, whatever you want me to do, I don't understand how this all works out. Symbolo, I don't understand how this works out. But she started to pray through it. Well, God spoke to her to go to India. So she became a missionary. In her 30s, she became a missionary to India. When she was there at the age of 34, she um, had a lo- young girl, a- a- age seven, Her name was Prina. Prina came to her doorstep. Now, let me tell you a little bit about how Prina got to the doorstep of Amy Carmichael. Prina, as a little girl that age, at the age of seven, she was given, and I'm going to try to say this the right way. It's one of the reasons we have kid ministries here. She was given to this temple, a Hindu temple. She was given to this temple as a child prostitute and to be assaulted as a way of worship to these gods, small g, not the living God. And she didn't want this, clearly, but her mother had given her to these, this temple, so she ran away. Now, little Prina, when she ran away, she ran back home because she thought something must, that why, I don't understand. She went back home, and her mother took her back to that temple, and those poor, uh, the, uh, the, the people that ran that temple burned her hands with iron, uh, ro- uh, hot iron rods so as a punishment for her escaping from that horrible situation. But little Prina escaped again, and little Prina found herself at the doorstep of Amy Carmichael. And now a seven-year-old little girl tells Amy Carmichael what she was going through. And it absolutely broke her heart as it does us today. So Amy Carmichael now, because she had centario, she took the word of God and held it in her hand, and she'd been symboling, she had been putting the pieces of the puzzle together, she now realized that when God said, make sure you make what is eternal the most important thing, she now began to realize this is what I'm supposed to be doing. She went on to rescue thousands of little children from that temple prostitution, thousands. She, as a matter of fact, she started a ministry, and it's an orphanage, and she began to house them. Even now today, 150 years later, guess what? There's still an orphanage. Actually, there's a hospital and, and an orphanage. There's still 500 children that are, are in, a, in an orphanage. That's, that's her, the remnants of what she started right there. Nurseries, all because one woman got a vision from God, took a step, even though she didn't understand everything, and God made it clear. She centario and she symbolized that, and she made sure that what was eternal was the most important thing. Amen? Now, Mary kept eternal perspective in the front of her heart. Fast forward 33 years from the time that Jesus was born, and we have Jesus on the cross. The Bible says that one of the only people that's there, one of the only disciples that's there at the time of Jesus' crucifixion is his own mother. Now, here we have this lady, Mary, who took these steps of faith, held on to, Centario, held on to what God had said, and then Symbalo, she had, she had not just held on to it, she had prayed through these things. How can this woman of faith stay, sit at the foot of that cross while her, her oldest son dies a horrible, horrible death on that cross? How can that all take place? Because she had remembered that the eternal is what really matters. The eternal is what really matters. And she remembered back to she remembered back, right? Centario, she kept the thing that the angel had said that about that baby boy. And she kept, she symbolized, she had prayed it through. And by the time we get to 33 years old and all that she had seen, she realized this is the point of all of it. Yes, my son is dying a horrible death. I mean, I couldn't imagine the, the emotions she's feeling. The pain she's feeling would have been beyond what you and I could understand to, be, to witness that. 
How did she make it through that? Because she put the eternal thing as the most important thing, and the eternal thing at that particular moment was the salvation of all mankind. So, guys, how do we apply this to our lives? Don't let the questions in your heart stop you from taking a step. And pray through and hold on to each thing that God has spoken to you. We all have questions, guys. Don't let the questions that are in your heart stop you from obeying God. Here we are in this Christmas season. Man, this would be a beautiful time to invite the person that you've been thinking of inviting. We got Christmas services next week. It's going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to it so, so very much. We've been planning and prepping. And guess what, guys? Maybe it's time for that person you've been thinking about inviting. Maybe it's time to not let the questions stop you from taking that step. Number two, pray through and hold on to each thing that God's spoken to you. Those things, the centario, don't let them go. Don't let them go. Symbolo, after you've held on to those things, pray through them. You're not going to have everything ex- completely understood to you. It's just not how it works until the end. Like Mary, it only made sense 33 years later. So what do we need to do instead? We got to make sure we pray through everything God's saying. Lord, how does this work? Lord, how does this, how the pieces of this puzzle work? And obey the Lord like never before. If I could have every head bowed, please, and every eye closed right now. We're going to pray. Pray that you just help, help us over. Take a few moments here and pray. The questions that we wrestle with, that we're struggling through, that we work through those, but uh, that even as we have questions, that we don't lose focus of who we're questioning, that we understand that you are a good God, and that even when we don't understand, it doesn't change the fact that you love us and you have our best interest at heart. Even if it's not the way we think our own best interest should work out, you love us and you care for us enough to give us your best. And so we trust us to give to give you our best and lead us in this life and trust in you. I pray that you help us to just uh, to step out with obedience, to have that courage to take those steps of obedience, to have that courage to just trust you as we step out in faith to know that as we learn to trust you, we learn more about your character and we learn more about what your plan is and that we learn to just keep walking by faith and not by sight. We thank you for that. And as we just get a deeper understanding of how much you love us every time we go around this earth to this time of year, we understand that more and more. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.